Hi everyone. I'm happy to have the chance today to tell you more about Semanto and I'm going to focus especially on our text analytics capabilities and our API. My name is Felix Mechner. I got a master's science degree in international information systems from the University of Erlangen Nuremberg in Germany. And I'm currently a director of product at Semanto Research for around about two years and I'm based in Nuremberg, Germany. So today's agenda looks like this. We're going to first um, take a look at um, what Simanto does. Um, I will then um, go into more detail about our text analytics API and then we can conclude with some use cases so you see um, how our customers um, use our API. So let's begin. Um, what does Simanto do? Well, we help our customers. I think, yeah, that's a good starting point. Um, that's not all. We help our customers understand consumers' real needs. So, um, for example, if you're looking at online reviews, um, we help them um, like really understand what people are writing and what are the, the individual the, the topics, the sentiment they have in their reviews without just purely looking at the star rating, which gives a lot more depth and insights. How we do this? We do this through text analytics. So Semanto helps their customers understand consumers' real needs through text analytics. Our psychology AI, this is how we call it, um, it detects emotions um, that, for example, uh, fear or disgust or sadness, happiness in any written text. Um, it can detect needs. Uh, for example, we had a, a project with a German restaurant and they found out through our text analytics that um, their sauerkraut was too sour, so they had to change the recipe. Um, and then also opinions. So this is, for example, the sentiment of a piece of text, uh, for example, a questionnaire or in social media. Uh, motivation, uh, for example, uh, what topics are driving a positive review. So, um, for example, the, the individual topics that someone's mentioning, which one's particularly positive, which is driving the actual star rating at the end. Um, our psychology AI also um, detects personality traits, which is in our case whether someone uh, is quite emotional or rather rational. And also communication styles. So, um, that means is someone revealing personal information more, is someone like seeking actions and um, we can do all that with our like models through our psychology and AI in any written text. Semanto was founded in 2010. Uh, we have a team of psycholinguists, linguists, AI experts, software engineers and so on, around about 70 employees currently. Um, we have like lots of different nationalities at Semanto, 32, maybe it's even more now. Um, all the different people have together published more than 80 research papers and we have nine PhDs in the company. Semanto is spread with their offices um, in several locations. We have a small office in the US, in New York City, we have people in the UK. Our headquarters is in Germany, in Nuremberg, where I'm based. Um, we have a team in Spain, which is growing and growing, and also some people in North Macedonia, um, particularly for um, like uh, engineering marketing team, which sits there. We have uh, also um, quite some strong collaborations with professors and um, researchers across Europe and the United States. Um, so you, you see some names here which may be familiar to you. We're working with the Columbia College in New York City, um, the Universidad Politecnica de Valencia, Coventry University in the UK, University St. Gallen in Switzerland and Hochschule Aalen in Germany. What's our like product portfolio? Um, it can be divided into three main sections. And uh, the first one is uh, our platform product. So this is a SaaS application where someone without any like technical knowledge can use our um, 
or psychology AI or core AI technology to just upload their data or connect it with um, any data sources and then um, get the results in a visually quite appealing manner. Uh, the second one is our, our like integration. So um, we use our models, our um, AI technology to build on top of um, existing other applications such as an add-in for um, Excel where you can then use um, the deep learning technology um, in Excel directly to analyze um, unstructured text in the cells. And you have guessed it, the last one is our API, which is the third in this, in this group, uh, which is also going to be our today's focus. So that brings us to the second point, um, our text analytics API. And uh, this is an overview of our API capabilities um, as of the current state, what we have. And you see here on the right um, that um, the different endpoints that our API supports at the moment. Um, and you can see that we have an um, uh, Ekman emotion model that um, detects the six different basic, basic emotions of Ekman. Um, and as I have briefly addressed previously, um, the personality traits, um, you have the communication style, um, a simple, like, <laughs> I call it simple, well, maybe not, um, but positive negative sentiment analysis. Um, we have a language detection method that, you know, you can detect the language code of any given text. Um, and also topic sentiment, which is um, quite also interesting because you, with this endpoint we detect the topics or th the terms um, in a particular text and then we also refer them to the sentiment in that text and can say that um, even though for example the whole um, sentiment of the post may be positive someone says like um, I don't know I like the food um, but the service was bad so with this endpoint you can detect that food was addressed in a positive context but service was addressed in negative context. So it gives you more more details to that piece of text rather than just looking at it from a like a post level analysis. Um, we're also working on a few more things to come in the future, um, but that's something for later. Okay, um, let's enjoy the few. <laughs> uh, why am I showing this to you? Um, actually, I want to dive deeper into some examples and uh, what this is is actually a hotel um, which I'm going to visit in uh, in a couple of weeks from now um, and the hotel is called Caparina Hotel. It's uh, listed on TripAdvisor. Uh, it got uh, almost 700 reviews. It's a hotel in Sicily, Italy and I thought yeah let's just take a look at the reviews. Um, I wanted to well, I have done it before when I booked it, but let's see what our AI says to the reviews that people have um, posted on their TripAdvisor page. Well, before we get started, um, I, I will, would like to share you a few things to set this up if you want to follow along with me. Um, we have a website on developers.simanto.net where you can obtain um, your API key. And this is free for, I think, up to 10,000 calls. Uh, you just need to sign up with your email address and password, and then you get your API key, which you can then um, use. Also, um, I would recommend you having a look at our API documentation, where you can find all the details around the different endpoints and so on. And You've, you'll also find that there's a button on the left in, in orange, Run in Postman, and this is a Postman collection that you can download, which makes it really easy to set up and test our different API endpoints. Um, so the third point is basically when you have installed it that you're ready to use it with Postman. Um, you can also, if you haven't downloaded it yet, get it on the internet on, I think, postman.com. And all you need to do is you need to paste in your own API key and then you're set up and can test our API endpoints. So let's, as I said, let's start with some examples. Um, this one is an easy one. I hope you can read it. It's not too small, but I read it out loud for you. Um, so I found this review on this um, hotel page that said, 
The food was so good we ate all our dinners on property. I could have stayed another two weeks. Beach, club, view, fantastic. Book your room now. So, well, it already sounds really, really positive. Um, what I have done here, however, I have looked at the communication style of this post. Because I wanted to see um, like the different classes um, that this post falls into. On the bottom right you see that the classes are action seeking, information seeking, fact oriented and self revealing. And um, the prediction in Postman that we got from this one is action seeking with a probability of 91% and self revealing with a probability of well almost 100%. And well what is that exactly? So let's take a look at this example. So um, here the person said book your room now so he's trying to um, like make people do something and that's one of the indicators why this post has been classified as action seeking and the other one um, well the rest of the post basically um, he uses a first person here so he says or she I don't know <laughs> um, she or he says I could have stayed another week and um, it was also used here in the first sentence like we ate all our dinners on property. So this person is revealing something from his from himself, and that's why we have these two classes. Uh, I also run the emotion, uh, not emotion, but sentiment endpoint on this post, and it also got a prediction which is well, uh, quite apparently very positive with 98%. And why this is so powerful, this example, is because we have here an, a very interesting combination of of um, classes that was were predicted for this post which is self-revealing action seeking and sentiment positive which is you could say like your best customer because this person is positive toward your business that person is action seeking that means this person can influence others by um, saying hey you should do that and if that's positive that's even better um, and it's self-revealing so he is or she is like talking from his own uh, motivation, his own experience. So if you find, like if you would apply this API and um, run it through um, all your um, reviews, if you have a hotel, if you have a restaurant, or whatsoever, um, you'll find the best customers and then you can, you know, you can continue like to profile them into finding out what characteristics they have. Are they usually families? Are they, um, single so you can really use that to build profiles um, to to build your target persona better and to understand them better let's continue this is a bit more tricky um, so the review said um, this is part of the review it's not the complete one but I took this one because it was quite interesting they said the pictures look lovely but don't be fooled okay so would you say it's positive, negative, well it's kind of a mixture. Um, I ran the sentiment endpoint here and I got the prediction was positive probably because pictures look lovely is quite a positive um, uh, expression uh, but with a probability of 67 percent so it's not very high. Um, we usually recommend to uh, to set a probability threshold around something between 60 and 85 percent depending on the on the domain that you're in um, and yeah so it's a bit tricky but let's t let's take a look at the remaining like text of that review because they didn't only say the pictures look lovely but don't be fooled but they said the hotel is dated and in need of an update and looking at the sentiment again we see now it went from positive to completely negative. So even though there's some positive act aspect in the sentence, like the pictures look lovely, and the probability overall is so negative with a probability of 97%, um, percent, um, which shows that this model actually takes the whole context into consideration and is not fooled itself by certain um, sentiment uh, words in the context or in that in that review. Um, I have um, two more like really controversial examples and um, for these two examples I have looked at our emotion endpoint and we also ask um, six annotators to um, tell us what 
emotion they think this text expresses. And um, the example is, look how proud he is. Well, think about this. Is this um, is this joy? Is this anger? You can pronounce it like differently. Um, the first annotator say it was joy. So it was like, look how proud he is, what he achieved. It's joy, maybe. However, the second one is that it was anger. Maybe it was like, look how proud he is. Um, uh, yeah, you know, <laughs> quite angry. Um, and we can see that there's not a, quite a, a big match between them. So it's it's quite mixed. Someone said it's a price. Okay. So the gold standard is, well, there's probably no emotion in this one. And looking at our API, our AI, um, well, it found joy as 74%, um, which I think is not bad. It, it, like we have three annotators here that also said it was joy. No emotion, 16%, surprise, 7%, um, and the rest can be probably neglected. So it's uh, for the API, it's probably more apparent than for the individual annotators, but you see like it's really, really difficult even for a human to say what emotion this is, and they didn't agree. The second one is Democratic Party chaining minorities since 1965. Well, that's a tricky one. Um, so let's take a look at our annotators. So the first one said disgust. Okay, yeah, this is this can be really disgusting if you read something like that. Um, it can, yeah, I understand this too. Um, surprise. Okay, well, okay. Someone said no emotion, yeah, that's also possible. Sadness, fear, so you can see it's super difficult. There cannot be even like a proper gold standard for this, no um, agreement between any of those annotators. Um, but what did our um, AI say? Well, sadness, 57%, uh, also, well, quite low. Surprise, 24%, joy, 10%. So you can see this one. This one was really, really tricky. Um, but what's the like the performance overall? And I have a few numbers here for you. Um, well, we don't have to dive into each of them individually. It's just uh, to give you an overview. Um, so what we have done is we tested the different models in several standard data sets, and what we obtained is basically a state-of-the-art accuracy with these. So what we, what we can take a look at is, for example, the sec sentiment accuracy at 90%, uh, which um, looks quite quite solid. Uh, we have an accuracy for the different emotions ranging between, I think, 58 and 70%. Um, our, our personality traits, which you may remember is um, emotional and rational, is at 95%. And communication style also ranges pretty high above 95% of accuracy of yeah the performance. Um, however, there's always le like a difference between performance and also the perception of performance. So, like um, no matter how high the figures are, um, the perception can actually be bad if the user finds the one uh, which is wrong in the evident evident cases. So this guy here, which is uh, which can be one of our customers, we have had that in the past. He says the AI is not trustworthy; it fails in obvious cases. So yeah, that's the difference between performance and perception of performance, which uh, we we deal with every day. Um, so let's um, finish this off. Let's take a look at the technologies that we use. Um, or that our researchers use. You can see Triton, um, TensorFlow, Kubernetes, Docker, probably you, you heard of these things. Um, Coco is actually Symanto's internal library for accelerating our NLP research. Um, Coco is something that was built um, on TensorFlow and I'm just reading this, it makes it easy to go from a quick experiment to model deployment on our production machines. So that's something that our team has built um, really to experiment a lot and to also be able to make this production ready for our different products, API and platform. 
that brings us already to the third point of the agenda today and in this one I would like to show you two examples of two companies that are working with us together on how they apply our API and let's see the first one is Question Pro I don't know if you're familiar with that company they're a online survey software and they have lots of like big customers um, that really um, run very extensive questionnaires with with Question Pro so um, they decided to um, to work with us on um, a topic and sentiment detection and endpoint and what they have done is um, they built a dashboard with several widgets on it and a customer of them can activate the uh, like text analysis widget which they will use to analyze open-ended questions and retrieve insights from their for example NPS questionnaires where they have an, an open text field where the customer can or the, the the participant of the questionnaire types in anything they like and this widget talks to our API to the topic sentiment endpoint um, it gets um, the topics and the sentiment of the topics back into the into question pros survey platform and it will then be provided as a like as a chart to the to the user of the platform to find out what the different aspects of that open comment or that open ended question were and whether the customer was positive or negative towards them. The second one is our collaboration with Attributes. Um, Attributes, if you don't know it, is a tool to monitor social networks and online reputation. And this is a, a very interesting project that we have um, worked on with Attributes. And this is actually a COVID-19 life tracker. And Samantha has built one for the English and German speaking countries. And Attributes is a um, Spain-based company. They have um, built on top of our um, German and English trackers and built their own um, Spanish tracker for uh, the COVID-19 pandemic and what they use is also the topic sentiment and point we we seen that also in other, other um, like customers they they're particularly um, keen to use that one because it gives really in-depth insights into the, the text um, but they also apply the sentiment here so they want to understand um, for example from Twitter data whether someone addresses um, Corona or COVID-19 in a positive or negative context and also the emotion so what emotion does it um, create when they when someone tweets something around Corona are they angry about it because the government has I don't know added new new restrictions or are they happy that um, the pandemic um, I don't know they they could work in home office for example some people are happy to do that um, so that was a very interesting project and you can also visit that website to take a look um, at the different charts and at the analysis that they have done um, using our API. And that's it. Uh, I'm at the end of this presentation. I hope you enjoyed and you learned a little bit about this one and thank you so much for your attention. Um, if you have any more questions you can always contact me, you can write me an email, you can call me or you can also get in touch with my colleague Kiko. Um, and then yeah that's it for now. Thank you so much and enjoy the rest of the conference.